that what you're doing or what you're about to do right now is a troll. You're considering it's a troll? Is it because you don't like it? And I continue to do it. Which is that 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 is a troll. But me and Adrian will enjoy it though. I don't care. I'm not doing it to hurt you. I'm doing it. No, to... it's because you both have the book. You could be doing it on your own time, but you're doing it live on the air during a recording. Yeah. And I just bitch the whole time. Yeah, but I feel like you're... that's a direct you're... troll. Like, no, like it's not I, like I, I it's feel... not like it, it's not like it has to happen in the show. It's not like it's like oh, I don't like having a mic in front of my face, but I want to do the show. That's not a troll because it's like, well, I need to have a mic in front of my face. I feel like you're show. trolling us. No, you're trolling me. Mm-mm. What? Me and Adrian don't enjoy this. I don't care. Yeah. No, because it's not vital to the show, and you could do it at another time, and it's not no, vital but we to want, anything. We want, yes, it is vital to the show. Not vital, but it adds value to the show. It doesn't add shit, How if about, I'm honest. Maybe this, maybe this one does, though. Oh, Christ. 35% of religions that believe in reincarnation also believe frequent flyer miles can be used in the next life. Is that's that, really, is that really no dumb. That's real dumb. <laughs> the air from the subway grate that blew Marilyn Monroe's skirt up in the seven-year itch also blew off a cameraman's hairpiece. <laughs> I <laughs> believe on. that one was read on the show before. <laughs> was it? I'm pretty sure. That's, that's a good one, right? No. Uh, the two most popular names in the 12th century were Genghis and Keith. I thought for sure it was just going to be Genghis and Khan. But... No, Genghis and Keith. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Day One Pass Podcast, episode 210, 210, 210. or 210, however you want to say it. What's that, uh, 90210? 90210, where the 210 90,000 90, more episodes and we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's bad. All right, top stories today include Battlefield 5. We've got a big announcement thing hosted by Trevor Noah, and we got a lot of... Uh, that was weird. Why? I watched uh, maybe 15 minutes of it today, and I was like... I'm just gonna wait. It's hard to tell when they get these celebrities on who like claim they're gamers. I think Trevor Noah is because he 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 didn't make like stupid, like he he was making jokes. He made good he jokes. Didn't make, actually, he didn't yeah. say like stupid stuff like "What do you jump in the game?" You know oh I mean? right. You know you know like some people like that Joel are totally, McHale that one time at the Game Awards where he's totally clueless. And, and just he makes, was just like, making fun of like us as as gamers. It's like, well, thanks, bud. Yeah. Just, you can leave. That now. was brutal. Holy crap, was that bad? But uh, I just I just find it weird that they get these celebrities to do it, and because uh, I think none of them are like super invested into games. They may be gamers, yeah, but they're not like following the the game culture or the game industry. Well, their job probably makes them like like they won't they like they they have to be on social media and like yeah. prepping for shows and stuff. So it's like they're not going to get super invested. But I'm just wondering when we're going to get that first like big celebrity who actually follows gaming and. Can name the developers of the games and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I kind of get the vibe that Drake is. Oh yeah, maybe because like because yeah. like streaming, like watching a stream, seems like a very tertiary thing. It's like if you get into games, the first thing you don't do is go like, "I'm gonna go watch somebody stream." Right. So if you're into gaming though, like you're kind of invested. Yeah. Then you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna watch some YouTubes or some some Twitch streamers." That's a good point. Yeah. So yeah, we got, we're gonna talk about Battlefield Five. Uh, we've got a little bit of Death Stranding updates. PlayStation is still experimenting with portable gaming. I got some comments for them. PS4 is entering the final phase of its life cycle. Rockstar owner promises that Red Dead Redemption 2 will not be delayed again. And we also have a query corner question. So that's what's coming up uh, this week. I'm going to start with what's new, though, Matt. Um, what the heck have I been playing? I'm playing, playing more Fortnite. That's the, that's the norm now. That's the huge... Um, found out something interesting in Fortnite or kind of scary or daunting, I guess, is, so you know how there's like the tiers and there's also like the level, like you have like a character level. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, this season, and I, it's the first time that I've experienced it. And I think it's the first time, um, that, that it's happened in, in a season, but I have only played the last couple of seasons. So don't, don't quote me here, but, um, this season it's like, you can level up your costume. So there's like the the blue guy. I don't remember his name, but there's like the blue guy. He You level up his costume, like by getting more armor pieces by leveling up. And there's like different tiers and there's like, you know, different pieces. And it's up to level 65. You get to level 65, you get everything. I'm level 42 at the moment. And I found out that the guy at the end, so when you get to tier 100, you unlock another guy and he can be, um, he can also have his suit like upgraded. 
the tier 100 challenges, which upgrade him, are actually also level. And I think it's like level 80 or 85 you have to get to. And what I was telling Marty last night is I'm really scared of it, actually, because like the tiers, I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of schedule. Mm-hmm. But we played last night for a good two or three hours, and I think I only got one level. And like we were pl- like we had a, you know a couple bad rounds, but we were like placing well. Uh, we won a couple of fifty v fifties, and like I, it's not like I wasn't participating. Like I got, I was getting five or six kills like every other round. Say like for at least three or four rounds, I got at least three kills. Right. And so like I'm participating in these games. Like it's not like I'm just like a potato. So I'm a little bit worried <laughs> on the level front <laughs> because like I'm at eighty percent boost right now, and then other. Other people can boost my XP as well if they're in the party with me. Um, but uh, Marty right now does not have the season pass, so I'm not getting the experience from right, him. Right. Um, a couple of his buddies that jump in, they do, so I'm getting experience from them, and I'm giving them experience as well. Like It's mutual. But what Marty was saying is maybe I should join, play squads with Phil. Like you can like say Phil or no Phil, like Phil yep. in your squad. Yep. But it says, with, it says like friend XP, so I'm actually going to look that up. I'm curious as to whether it's like... If I didn't explicitly invite them into my lobby and I just did fill, will I get the XP bonus? Mm-hmm. And I feel like I won't. I don't know, but I feel like if that if if it is, if it's a yes, chances are the most of the people are probably gonna have the battle pass and I'll be able to like kind of plow through it a bit. Mm-hmm. But I'm a little worried on the level front. Um although I will say that I think you get a lot of experience for placing well in solos and I'm getting like at least top 10, normally top five in a lot of solo games. So if I, maybe I just need to do a couple of good nights of solos. Uh, I mean, I am ahead of schedule regardless. Like I'm, I'm beyond the halfway point or like around the halfway point. I can't remember if it's 80 or 85 and I'm 42, like I said. So I'm uh, in and around or above the halfway point and I'm before the halfway point of the season. So if I keep playing the same way I have and I've been playing casually, I'm going to hopefully end up getting it. Mm -hmm. But there's still that worry. I think I'm starting to lose my interest with Fortnite, though. Because you actually have a reason to play. You have stuff to unlock. You have a goal. Yeah. You have missions. You wanted to do the challenge and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm not doing any of that. So I... Uh, it's really... But that, that's, that's of your own accord, though. You could be doing that. I could be doing that, yeah. Yeah. But I, don't, I also don't have a desire to buy the battle pass. I feel like I feel like you would if you bought it once. Maybe. Because if you buy it once, you're going to end up... Like, buy it once and play it a decent <clears throat> amount. And, right. I, and I mean, like, not, like, a ludicrous amount. Yeah. You're going to have enough to buy the next one. For, for, like, I'm, I'm above already the amount I would need, assuming the price stays the same. Um, like, I have over 1,000 V-Bucks right now. So... I don't want to play on my own either. That's the thing. I do like... I it, You know what? Uh, surprisingly, even though you have to listen and stuff... Um, it's a, it's a podcast game for me. I'll toss on a podcast and just kind of keep the volume kind of low. Mm-hmm. And, uh, sometimes it'll be just like a repeat episode of a podcast, like just the background noise kind of, right. and I'll, I'll just like, I'll just rip through a game. And I usually do really well when I have a podcast on too. Mm. If I get to the end, I shut it off. Right. Uh, because I need to hear everything at that point. But, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm fine throughout. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I don't know. I, f- I find it, I find it fun solo and, and with, gr- and with friends. So I'm, I'm good with it. And I like that. I like that. There's no like. Well, there is a time limit to do stuff, as I just discussed. Yeah. But it's not ludicrous. Like I'm like I missed a whole week of playing, and I'm still not behind yet. Yeah. So I do like that. It's not like play this in the next five hours to unlock. Yeah, you got to break this tomorrow night, or else like. Yeah. Why didn't you have four people in your group with a battle pass? Like, oh, here we go. You got to have four people in the group with a battle pass to do this. Yeah. Like frick. Uh, so I just it just came out today. Detroit Become Human. I played the first uh, like the first main like story mission, and then and then it goes like into the credits and whatnot. And then I played like a little bit after that. Played two other characters. I think it's three total, and I might have lost one already. <laughs> so God damn it! Yeah. So I'm I'm. It's pretty fascinating because they do break it down for you after you complete the mission, right? Of all the different paths you didn't go. Now, they don't tell you what those paths were, right? You're supposed to find that out for yourself. Oh, but I was going to say, that's kind of spoiler territory. Yeah. You can't replay it? Like, but what the it, hell? But it actually shows you that, oh, you missed something like at this like section. Okay. You know, go figure that out if you want to play it again. Um, and, and right off the bat, they, they ask you, like, what difficulty setting, right? It's, it's either, like, I think it's easy or experienced, okay? And okay. experience is, like, oh, challenging, like, like, gameplay and whatnot, right? And it's, like, 
an increased risk of losing characters. Because once, once the character's dead, they're dead. So it's like a minor blunder might like have major consequence. So I may have like chopped off a third of this game already. That's good, though. I like that. I, so like, I like that there's that risk. I do want to go back and play it again once I've gone through it the one time. Right. And then the easy setting is like less of a chance. Well, do we know how long this game is? Because there's like... I've not, I've not heard. I don't know. Because it's rather complex in terms of story. So like, is it one of those things where it's like, it's only a few hours, but you have to do it a few times? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. How are you enjoying it? Is it gimmicky? Like, what's it like? No, it's, it's really good. Um, the one part I don't like, and this is the kind of true for all, all of the Quantic Dreams games. Right. Is the walking around is is kind of weird? Uh, what's another Quantum it's, Dream it, game? Well, the Heavy Rain and um, Beyond Two Souls. Okay, I'm, I can't relate, but it's just like, like like it's very clunky the walking around and and when you hit like a certain direction, it doesn't always go in that direction. It's almost like tank controls, so to speak. Like I don't very, like I don't like that. A very minor version of tank controls, and and the camera is kind of finicky and hard to work with. So that's the only that's the only like critique I have right now. They're trying to, it almost seems like they're trying to be cinematic, from what I've seen. A little it's, bit. There's, so. there's one cool function like um, there's like certain actions people will take. Right. And you can like press L one and it will like zoom in and you'll get like a more cinematic and properly framed views of it and stuff. Yeah. So that's that's pretty cool actually. I like that stuff. But just just kind of walking around is clunky. You just feel heavy and and kind of big and not very accurate. I get that. I get that vibe. Um, I get like the heavy vibe from Battlefield, like from anything Frostbite. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, no, I shouldn't say anything Frostbite because it does quite a bit. But in terms of the shooters, like Battlefield is like a big one. Like I said, um, it's it's really it's really like that. There's something too f- mechanical about. Ba- the, the, I feel like I'm in a mech. Yeah, it's just like, but even like the games look great in Frostbite. Yeah, well, yeah, but they just and they, they run well. They too, still actually. don't. They still don't feel real. Do you know what I mean? It just doesn't feel like a real environment to me. I don't know what it is. It like I feel like I feel like I'm playing a game. Like it's it's very obvious. Yeah, like it's not immersive. Like if you take like a Ubisoft, like say Assassin's Creed, that world feels like it exists there. Yes, I don't know what it what it is about it. It's just it's just the way I feel though. I wonder if it's something along the lines of <coughs> Call of Duty versus Battlefield. So what I mean by that is whenever whenever a game isn't very responsive, I always think like fuck, like I wish this was super responsive like Call of Duty. Yeah. Where it's very snappy, like it's just a snap shooter if you will, like you can really really snap around corners and mm-hmm. like knock people out especially if your sensitivity is up on a, on the controller. Whereas I find that these other games so like, um, what's that called again? Detroit become human. Become human. I always think it's Detroit Beyond Human for some reason. Beyond two souls. <laughs> Damn. <it. laughs> but anyway, so like like the game that you the Detroit and um, and Battlefield like they're more about the experience and the world, I guess. So like I feel like the the snap shooting goes away. I almost feel like the esports aspect <coughs> of Call of Duty helps it because it needs to be very quick. Like Counter Strike is the same sort of deal, right? That's all about esports and being super competitive, and it's very quick. And I feel, I feel as though that's because, like, like let, let's let's be serious here. You couldn't you couldn't play an esport shooter game in a Fallout engine in like the Creative Engine or whatever they have, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It, but it suits it because the enemy characters are kind of slow too, right? So like you're on an even playing field and you can get used to the controls. Plus you're like doing a lot of exploring, looking around. You're not just shooting. Whereas I feel like something like Battlefield, maybe they could, they should tighten it up. Maybe they should really look at it and tighten it up to be like COD. In terms know. of the controls, I not... don't know because I feel like their fans like it that way. I personally think that Call of Duty probably has the best first-person shooter engine ever. Because I think, but I I believe that that's because of the esports. Because they they they're investing hard in the esports. Which interestingly, just side note, um, I I kept saying on the previous shows that. Call of Duty was going to bring Battle Royale to esports. And then there was that like tweet or Instagram or something like that I sent you guys mm-hmm. where it was like Fortnite's going to do a couple of events before the release of COD and yeah. they're going to be esport events. Yeah. <laughs> so like there's money in it, man. It's, it's crazy. Big actually. money. It's, it's really crazy. So um, let's talk about Solo for a bit. Uh, the Star Wars story. How would you like that one? We went and saw it. Um, we're going to get into the little spoilers, I guess, here. Yeah, so just we'll, uh, skip ahead like five minutes or so. We'll mark the spoilers and I'll put the timestamp in the show notes yeah. or description 
as applicable. There you go. So what do you, what do you think about Solo, Matt? Uh, pleasantly surprised, for sure. Yeah. Uh, better than I expected. Because you guys were talking... I don't really follow a lot of that, that stuff. I don't really read a bunch of the... I don't read any of the stuff, really. Uh, I didn't really, really <laughs> watch the trailer. I don't really remember it, if I did. But... You guys were saying there was a bunch of like reshoots, and I think like Ron Howard wasn't on the project. So they had um, two directors before who were the directors who did um, the Lego movie. Right. I said something, something in something Miller. I can't remember their first names. So there was like some sort of creative dispute between them and Lucasfilm. And okay. so they left the project, and then they brought on Ron Howard. And then there was like massive reshoots. And I, I almost think, I recall them like they almost like filmed all of it over again. So it was pretty crazy. Like clear, like well, not clearly because they're not there, but it almost sounds exactly like as if they were fighting. Like, like, like what was what was there that uh, the Millers or whatever you said, mm -hmm. whatever they had when Ron Howard showed up was just like all pieced together because it was like the two people fighting, right? Like they were fighting creatively with the studio, and so whatever was left was just sort of like this mess of like they were trying to work with their vision and the enemy and the enemy, but and the <laughs> and the other vision, the opposite yeah. vision, yeah, and it just didn't work. So it was just a clash and it was just a bunch of shit kind of strewn all over. One of the, one of the theories of why like there was a creative difference was, um, because the Millers did obviously the Lego movie, which was a comedy. Yeah. Um, a really silly comedy, right? Yeah. It's for kids. Yeah. So they were wondering if like one of the theories is that they were making this solo movie a little too, too zany, a little too crazy, you know, I could definitely see that. Although, like, I've only, I, as far as I know, I've only seen the Lego movie from them. Like, I don't think I've seen anything else from them. So, I, 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 don't, I don't recall what else they've done. That's interesting. I, I'm, I'm trying to envision it now as a comedy, and I feel like I wouldn't be able to. One of the comedy bits they think was let in. I was listening to a spoiler cast today. One of the one of the Millers' comedy bits that they think was left in was um, Han and Chewie in the shower. Okay, yeah. So I don't know if that's, that's true a, or not. That, that's a little comedy bit. Yeah. For sure. So I'm not sure if that's like one of the things, like their kind of style of, of comedy. Maybe it was a lot of, because um, I know in a lot of comedies they, um, they uh, what do you call it, not ad lib, but um, improvise. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder if, if Lucasfilm wanted more to stick to the script, you know. And they were just kind of like goofing off on the on the set, right, probably? Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. But I don't know. It's a, it, we'll never know these things, you know, fully. Yeah, yeah. Something will leak out, but you can never know what size is, you know, saying their own their own story and whatnot. You know what I think this movie portrays that would be super interesting is I feel like they could... This is the first... Well, one of the first times we've seen really gritty combat. This was essentially like World War II. They were in the trenches, and even though they had like, you know, they didn't have, you know, bullets, they had laser guns. Mm-hmm. It was still oh, yeah, very the, the, gritty, big, the big war part. Very yeah. muddy. Mm -hmm. yeah. The soldiers didn't want to be there. It was just like real shitty. And it was like, we're going to go there. And it's like, we're going to die. Well, too bad. You're going there. Like, it's <laughs> right. fucking bad. Get over there. We need to take that hill. Yeah. If you die, you die. Um, I kind of feel like this. I kind of feel like we could use a war movie in the in in the Star Wars. Like like just a straight up, almost like a World War II, straight up war movie. Don't know. None of the rebellion crap. Let's just focus on they're going to take a planet or a hill. Or something, and let's have a war movie. Well, there was a really good book, actually. I don't think it was re reviewed too well, and I can I can see why like they didn't review it well. But I, um, it was the first Battlefront book, and it just followed soldiers fighting in the uh, the rebellion. That's interesting. Didn't didn't include any of the, like the top brass or Jedi or anything like that. It was yeah, just, yeah. It was just soldiers going from planet to planet fighting, doing their daily grind. Yeah, yeah. You know that was that was pretty neat. So it was a cool like um, perspective to see. I don't know if they would do a movie on it though. I I feel like that could have that that battle could have really dealt like had had a movie. You don't think so? Think think about that, not, right? Because it's, it's, it's like it's like they're 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 attacking the the native people. Yeah, right. That's what they said. They're like, oh, they, there's hostiles over there. And then Han goes like, no, we're the hostiles. Like they're the natives to this planet, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. And that'd have been super interesting to see. Like, not necessarily that particular battle or that particular planet, but that sort of gritty... Because normally we see a battle in, in Star Wars where it seemingly is over in 15 minutes. Yeah. And it really... Realistically, it's like there's a few explosions. There's, like, some tanks and stuff that come in. And, like, the most gritty I think we've maybe seen it is 
when the Ewoks were involved. <laughs> yeah. Really, though. <laughs> yeah. You know, this, but it's interesting to see. It's like, yeah, this is the future, but the war isn't getting cleaner. It's still like you're in the mud. There's like shitty. It's raining. You know, you're in the trenches. Well, this like was this... the, um, I'm not sure when this movie takes place. I can't really figure out where. I think it might be like maybe 10 years before A New Hope. That would make sense to me. You know? I, I fucked up the timeline totally and thought it was before the first one. Like like episode one. Oh, no, no. And then when people kept talking about New Hope, I was like, now I don't know what the fuck's going on <laughs> now at all. Because Yeah, because the Empire didn't exist before right. uh, Phantom Menace. So I was all confused. So this, this is in between. This is in between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Right, right. And I think it's about ten years before A New Hope. I'm not. I'm not certain on that, but I feel like that would be a good time to to put it. And so it's almost like the Empire is still kind of setting up. It's you know, mm-hmm. like for them to have like mercenaries not in stormtrooper armor. You know what I mean? It's almost like they couldn't like make enough armor yet for all their all their soldiers, and they just had like regular combat armor or something. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure what that was about. See, that's what I mean, is that that type of story is super interesting. Like, it's the grittiness of Star Wars. Because, like, we're, we see a lot of the grittiness in the, in the politics mm-hmm. and in the grand scheme of stuff and in, like, the evil acts. But we we rarely see the actual warfare. Because, really, like, if we think about it, <coughs> like, in our timeline, World War One was bad. World War Two was bad, too, right? Mm-hmm. But it they were both bad in their own way. It's not like... World War Two, just because there weren't, there wasn't mass trench warfare, that it was better. Right. It was like no, it was still shitty. People were still slogging in the mud. You know, there were still trenches, and it was it was a different, but it was still crazy. Like it was still bad. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It was still bad for the soldiers. Whereas, I think we almost, I think Star Wars almost, I, I don't want to say glorify, but that's the only word I can think of is they seem to glorify the battles in that. Oh, everyone's you know clean and fine and. They show up on the planet, they all kind of like line up, and then it's, you know, it's very scripted in that they show up, and if they get blown up, they get blown up, but that's about it. It's like there's robots shooting at each other, and like the big mechs and stuff are firing, and then the Jedi have a big fight, and then it's just like, oh, we took the town. But I don't know how gritty they want to get, because, yeah, a lot of people want like gritty Star Wars stuff, only because we're adults now, but that's not what we wanted when we were kids. We just wanted to find an action-adventure flick. Well, that's what I mean by, I don't think, I don't think they should do it in the main installments yeah. the episodic ones yeah but i feel like you could do like since they have this thing like this I mean, rogue, rogue, separate... one, rogue one was pretty gritty they all they all died at the end too that was gritty but again we're not seeing the battles like we're still seeing heroes or like the the main heroes like we're not seeing the battle like i guarantee i guarantee in the empire slash rebellion or any any of those you know all war factions there were times where they had trouble taking a hill for a month right and so it'd be super interesting to see that right like we're, we're we're only seeing the high profile like mid to high profile people we never see the the lowly guys and you could do with that as a star wars story i agree with you it'd be interesting but i just don't know if it if it fits into star wars in that breath then i don't think they should have had that whole trench scene in solo because see even that was like dark and and, and like Dingy. A lot of people were like just getting blown up, and that that one like captain got blown up. It was and, depressing, yeah, and stuff like that. But like, no one was ever scared. Like Han Solo was never scared during that scene. He was just he just ran into the into like the ditch, and then was like talking to the guys. And stuff I feel like that's that's his had, had that, time to notice the thing, blast though. marks on the guy's uniform and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it was it was still this like just shooting your pistol from your hip kind of kind of cowboy movie. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's what Star Wars has always been, though. There's never been there's never been a weight to the actual war, I guess. That that's strange to me. That's I almost feel like they missed a boat there. They could. But that's they what could... Star Wars is like. I, I kind of explained this to you, like uh, I think last last week or so. Star Wars has always been the most simplified version of good versus evil. Yeah. So the good guys, they always have hope on their side. They're always they're always like excited and happy. Yeah. And then they got the bad guys who want to crush it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just them fighting. And there's literally color-coded lightsabers to, to show that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. it's, like, very obvious. Yeah. And color-coded clothing, really. Everyone's in, in black on the dark side, right? Everyone yeah. has the black robes. Yeah. So it was a very clean, clear distinction. And I think once they started muddying the lines, you know, right? that's where it stopped becoming the original Star Wars series. When did they muddy the lines? I would I would say, um, I would say with these, with these new Star Wars films. 
I don't know. I don't know about that. Well, even even with the prequels, so to speak, like the fact seeing like Anakin struggle with turning to the dark side or not, you know. Whereas to Luke, it was like always the light side's always right, no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there but was that, there were temptations for him, and they were, and then the, 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 the Emperor and Vader wanted to turn him to the dark side, right? Yeah. But he was still always that shining beacon of light. But he he was he's very. I don't know how to put this. He, it, it's it's a classic <laughs> writer trope, where they take essentially their character and they go, oh, you know, this is his normal every day. What would happen if we flip it mm-hmm. or like change it in a, in a major way? Right. Because that's how they always explore things, especially that's how kind of like shows start to fail. Or if when a show and like a, not necessarily Star Wars, but when a an episodic show starts to fail, they flip the characters mm-hmm. to try to get the ratings up and the interest stuff again. Yeah. So it's almost like they did that within the Star Wars because they didn't want the trope of just like, well, he's good and this other guy's bad. I just I, I think it's just a change in how our culture tells stories now, you know. Because, like, Luke, yeah, he lost his... He never knew his, his parents. He lost his aunt and uncle. Yeah. Right? But he was still a happy kid willing to go join the rebellion. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, but now it's like, oh, Ray, she doesn't have parents. She's conflicted. It, she's a more complex character. And it's just, it's just... That's not what Star Wars has always been. These weren't complex characters. Everyone was clearly defined, you know? Yeah. But but Luke, Luke, regardless of the fact that he knows parents and what have you... He still had like a general upbringing, like he was just a farmer. Yeah, he wasn't some sort of slave or whatever Ray is. Yeah, it's, see, and it's hard to believe that Ray would grow up being as good as she is, growing up in that lifestyle where everyone on that planet is like out to get each other, you know, and screw each other until they're over. Yeah, and like kill each other as they're hunting for scrap. Out Wouldn't there. you say that it's unrealistic that if if she was if she was un, if she was not conflicted? I would say that that's actually something that we would bitch about, is we no, would say that she right. was too happy to get out. You're right. Like, but she I'm was saying, happy to leave, but you know, there's you could leave evil or leave good. You're right. But what I'm saying is, I think w- as an audience, we expect more complex characters. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, that's not what Star Wars has always been. This is actually why I, I prefer movies like, well, a movie. I, I don't like Rogue One, but I, I preferred <laughs> Solo. To let's say Last Jedi because Episode Seven I liked because it was a return to the to the series that's fine and it was rather safe mm-hmm. and traditional. Last Jedi to me was too serious. It was it, they build up. I think the problem with Star Wars and this happens in other series as well is they get these characters and especially in this case where where the characters were young when they were in the movies and then they get they got like physically like the actors literally got old. Mm-hmm. Um. I feel like they they build up these characters way too much and they 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 latch onto them way too much and it gets in the way of telling a legitimate story. I don't need to have like a really awkward zoom in on on you know people dying when they were a big influence in other movies. I don't need this big emotional thing. Yes, like that has its place. Like if let's say Luke died in the original trilogy mm-hmm. because he was there throughout the entire trilogy, that's something to behold essentially. But I feel like now it's like a leash. It's like an anchor where like it's just pulling them back. It's like pull back, pull back, pull back. Whereas these Star Wars stories, they're just kind of jumping all over the place. And I appreciate that. Like Solo was very much just an action flick in the Star Wars universe. And I rather like that. There wasn't really anything anchoring it to it. Like there was a lot of fan service with the dice and crap. But like there was, but it's not as serious as the the other. The other ones are so serious with the force and they're so serious. It's almost like the rich people or the heroes of the series, or the heroes of the rebellion or whatever they are now, the heroes, and they're like petty squabbles, and like the rest of the universe doesn't matter. And it's like th- like they're so infatuated with their own high level mm. government, I guess, or whatever you'd call it. Like they're the heroes of the rebellion, and nothing else matters. Like they have these like squabbles and problems in amongst themselves. Like I don't know. Like it feels like they're all high and mighty because they're tied to these old characters whereas the star wars stories are just sort of like i mean it, it, again i don't really like rogue one but like it's just like a, a ragtag group of people and with like a big fight and then with solo it's like yes it's tied to these old characters but we, this story has been on was never told mm-hmm. so there wasn't anything to like that was a leash other than the fan servicey stuff like the dice and well, stuff like I, I saw on twitter today someone pointed out like a really interesting thing is 
in this in in solo they weren't trying to save the galaxy or save the world yeah they were just doing their own thing and it was kind of refreshing because all these marvel films every single marvel film is like we got to save the world and it's like how many times can you save the entire planet that's what i mean by you know that's what i mean by being having petty squabbles it's getting tiring to them saving the planet i just want to see them on a story um and so Ant-Man, like the first Ant-Man was good like that. It wasn't about saving the world. It was just their own little situation. Yeah, yeah. You know? So. But I do think that Solo handled the um, the fan service probably the best of any of the new Star Wars films. Because they didn't draw much attention to it. It was there if you knew it was there. Like, um, at one point, uh, Lando says to Beckett, like, you're, you're the one who killed Aura Singh. Now, you probably have no idea who that is. No. Right. And that, that could just be a piece of throwaway dialogue. Who does he, who does he say that to? Uh, Lando says it to um, Woody Harrelson's character. Okay. Right? So, to so you, as as not someone who knows like the Expanded Universe or anything like that, that doesn't mean anything. That's just a throwaway line. Oh, yeah, it's just backstory into this Beckett guy. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the fans, we know who that character is. Okay? Okay, okay. So, is, is that, that was, that's a proper way to handle fan service. Don't just throw it in my face. Make it lore-specific. Yeah. Well, the, I... Marty was telling me that the the dice was too was too much. I don't even. Well, here's, here's I, I, rec- I, I recognize weird. it was fan service, but I didn't know. I didn't know the reference. Here's what I find weird about the dice: is yeah, the, the dice only appeared in, in a New Hope. Okay. okay, they were dangling from the Falcon's cockpit. Okay, they, I think they disappeared after that. Right. So it wasn't that important. It was. It was <laughs> almost seems negligible at this so point. So in a New Hope, it was a reference to George Lucas's previous film, American Graffiti. People driving around in their hot rods in the 1950s, um, with the with, with the dice, dice. With dice in their in their mirror. Yeah. So it was like a it was a joke that oh here's a starship, you know, yeah. with dice and uh, with, the, with the fuzzy dice. Yeah. So it was just a joke. And yet they and like yet they made it the same thing. But here's what's weird about it. So clearly it's like this connection between Han Solo and Kira, right? Yeah. Because they pass it back and forth, right, to show that they're like they're together. Yeah. But then Luke gives it to Leia. So here's this memento that didn't apply to Leia. It applied to Kira. And Luke then hands the dice to Leia as if it means something to her. I think it's supposed to be more a, metaphysical than Kira. I think it's just supposed to be an, literally his lucky dice. Maybe Han never... It, it was because, yeah, it was just like he threw it on the speeder. As but I feel like, like it wasn't It wasn't linked to, to Kira so much as it was his lucky charm and he literally was passing the luck. But it wasn't the object itself. It was like more metaphysical than that. Maybe you're right, but I just thought it was weird. It, it's strange that it was like a reference to another movie that they like really fan serviced. That's weird. It would have made more sense if we if Leia knew about the dice. If we saw something with Leia and the dice before Luke gave it gave her the dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird for them to set that up in the movie before Solo. That was weird. That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Solo was good though. I I really enjoyed it. I I actually want to go see it again now. Definitely worth definitely worth the watch. I'd say. Yeah. All right, we're running out of time here, so let's get into the the gaming stories. Spoiler alert over. All right, Battlefield Five was announced. So you watched a bit of this, you said, right? Yeah. So let me just run down a couple of the key features. Uh, they're going to have a single player. They they mentioned that because of the whole Call of Duty getting rid of their single player. Okay. But it's going to be the war stories, which is what they did in Battlefield One. So they had like five or six. That's fine. Self-contained stories that you can. I never uh, beat those, but you, that's you fine. You jump in. I, I actually like them. I know they got some criticism from people. I like them. I thought they were pretty nice. They're well done, well acted, and stuff like that. Um. Those are coming back. Uh, I guess they're going to focus on smaller stories, though. You're not going to be like running like on Normandy, you know. There's going to be like a little. I think I have an example here of one of the things you're going to focus on. I mean, it's probably one of those. It's probably one of those things where it, those have been done so many times. Yeah, one of the stories teased focused on a young female resistance fighter trying to save her family in the top of Norway, north of the Arctic Circle. There you go. So you're way away from the the battle. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's someone else's like small story what they accomplished during World War II. So I think that's kind of cool. And uh, I'm not sure if they're factual or not, though. I'm not sure how that works. I'm not sure if that's a true story, to be honest. I can't really comment on that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it takes place in World War II. I guess I should have mentioned that off the top. Battlefield Five takes place in World War II. Yeah, that's strange. Who decided to name it Battlefield One? Is they my should have just called it. Well, Battlefield One's fine, and then they could have like kind of recovered just calling it Battlefield World War II, but. Or just call it Battlefield 1945 or something, <laughs> for Christ's sake. Yeah. Or 1942, and that's just the new 1942. Yeah. 
So this will not have a premium pass, and all the all the all the maps and like modes will be released to everyone for free, which is uh, pretty interesting. Considering but, that really fragmented the Battlefield One community, I found although to an extent because we, if you had friends who had the premium pass, you yeah. could you could play with them. But obviously, not that's not everyone. No, right? but that that was the thing is I remember playing with Nate on Xbox a couple of times, and it it seemed like we were. I mean, it could have just been a connectivity thing, but it seemed like we were struggling more to get into matches that were mm. premium pass only or like whatever. Right. And that kind of sucked. Yeah. So this seems to be a trend for EA though, because uh, t- it started with Titanfall 2. Titanfall 2, all their, d- all their DLC was free. Yeah. Battlefront's DLC is, is, is all free. Yeah. Now we have Battlefield's It's DLC probably because they make, they make so much more. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're going to have loot boxes. I think you can just straight up buy customizable items. That's really strange. Is it? I I just I just automatically assumed it was gonna be loot boxes. <laughs> I feel like they're scared. <laughs> I mean, maybe they should be. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. like let like if you're gonna make millions and millions and millions off this thing, you know, simmer down there. Don't don't try to gouge too much. So here's what you love though, Matt. So instead of them selling a DLC and stuff, they're gonna have something that's called Tides of War, which is how they're gonna roll out new content to the game. It's gonna be a games as a service type deal. Including oh, limited goody. time gear. Fuck. Such as dog tags, soldier skins, <sighs> and face paint. So if we're going to be doing this and you really want something in that game, it's timed. I'm getting to a very very slight side note. Whenever I get annoyed with something or, or it stresses me out, even a little bit, but it goes on for a long time, mm-hmm. I get to a point where I literally don't care so much. <laughs> that yeah. I literally will block everything. Yeah. So it'll be like to the point where I'm like, you know what? That's limited time. I could do that tomorrow, but I'm not going to do that. That's how much <laughs> I don't care. I do like that you can customize your soldiers, though. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's okay. Like, I like I liked having the authentic, like, uniforms in, in Call of Duty World War II. Yeah. Um, but I would also like to, like, have, like, put on my own boots and my own pants, if, if it is to that extent. Right, right, right. You know, I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, there's going to be a co-op mode as well, which is coming back. I guess a lot of people wanted this to come back. I don't know what you mean by co-op. Like, I don't remember a co-op. In I guess I guess in the older battlefields. I don't remember not that. A, not a recent one, I don't I, think. Not the, maybe I just haven't played it. Uh, so up to four can play. Okay. And uh, you would like drop in behind enemy lines, and you need to complete an objective, preferably without being seen. Without being seen? Yeah, it says these tasks are dynamic. And there's a strong risk reward aspect. You can I choose... don't remember this at all. Well, this is new to this game. Oh, like this co-op mode. But they're saying co-op is returning. So anyway, take that for what you will. Uh, you can choose to extract early and play it safe, or go deeper into enemy territory. Now, the big thing was the grand operations because you're a big fan of operations themselves. Yeah, operations is a, is, my, is my shit. These are grand operations. They take place over four maps. Right. Which include which is like four days of battle in in game. Fuck yeah! And then on the last day is essentially their battle royale mode. That's where this is coming in. So on the on the on like the, the on the fifth is is either fourth or the fifth day. Right. Resources is low because you've been fighting for for days. Okay. And so it, everyone goes in. Yeah. You all have one life, and you fight until the last man standing, essentially. Yeah, that's all right. That's pretty like, good. Eh? I like that. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. pretty good. Yeah. What's it's super interesting to me about that is, and again, I haven't watched the whole presentation, but I'm curious as to whether you could get stuck on map one. So you said four in-game days just because it's like the four maps, mm-hmm. but is it actually a time thing? So is it like you're fighting for, like, let's say you fight for, like, I don't know, let's just say it's 10 minutes a day. So you fight for your 40 minutes. Yep. And then at the end of your 40 minutes, you get, like, you know, an additional round. That's your battle royale round. That's also 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then based on whoever was doing better... They get like a bonus or whatever, I'm sure. But I wonder if like if you got stuck on map one, like does the battle royale always happen on map four or could it happen on map one if you just got stuck there? Yeah, they mentioned something um, about possibly getting stuck. Because it did happen in the other games. Like you'd, you'd you could, you could hold forth. the line. Yeah, you hold the damn line. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Um, and uh, they kind of they kind of were like happy about that. So I'm not go. I had to go back and watch the um, the announcement um, video, but. They, I, I they, really, I really think they should have had more footage. It was too much talking. 
They really should have showed off more. And and those developers were awkward too. They weren't, you know. That's why I stopped watching. I was just like, I'm just gonna like <laughs> read on this later. Like I don't, I don't care. Enough. That's another bad thing because Trevor Noah was really good like on camera, right? He was he was clearly reading off his dialogue. And he whatnot. was super smooth like in the intro too. That was a pretty good intro. And then and then you have these developers who are all kind of shy, not used to being on the camera. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? The I think these um these companies need to hire some sort of communications person. Just like bring out a like have like a guy who also does their social media. You know, just have like a social guy who yeah. does their like public PR stuff, like the on the camera stuff. But then have like the developers there just answer the more technical questions. Yeah, but then but like, you need it, someone who can respond in a, like a happy, excited way and in transition. Or if a developer mm-hmm. kind of hesitates due to like stage fright, they can just hop it, hop in, and yeah. just kind of like go on. Yeah. All right. Well, that's Battlefield Five. Uh, we're gonna see more about it um, at E3, or not not technically E3, but the EA Play event or whatever the hell it's called. You know what's really? Uh, do we know? Do we even a? Uh, uh, sorry, and a uh, release date. Sorry, on that yet. Not in my notes. October or something though. I think. You know what's really bad about that? Hmm. What's coming out in October? I think it's October. Red Dead. I'm pretty sure it's Red Dead, or at least it's around there. So guess who's not buying Battlefield Five right away? I'll buy them all. I'm not buying. I'm uh, not buying a uh, Battlefield and a Red Dead. That's not happening. I saw a funny article, or it was the um, the Game Scoop podcast on IGN. It said October is the real Battlefield. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> That's a good freaking question. Is is can they duke it out? Like, I mean, I can't remember when the Red Dead Redemption Two thing is. I'm, I know or the release date is. I know it's out. So look it up. But um, if it's if it's going to release close to it. Like, like within a week, like it could not. But like, if if it's within a week, like we're gonna we're gonna see a fight. And I'm I, I'm being honest here. Like, I'm not buying a Battlefield game a week before a Red Dead. That's just not gonna happen. I'll buy both. It doesn't matter to me. Because I'm not gonna I'm not, I'm not gonna want to play both, so I'm just not gonna do it. Yeah, and then but, I'll but, end up but, getting but. a freaking discount probably on like a like a Christmas sale for <laughs> Battlefield Five. That's probably what's gonna happen. Because yeah, if, that's if, not, yeah. If, if Red Dead has online, yeah, I'm gonna want to grind in Red Dead if it's anything like GTA Online. So I'm going to freaking be playing well, Red Dead. Let me see what the release date is for. Yeah, I can't remember. Did Frick. they announce it? They announced it. I had, it. I had it written down. And I can't remember. Oh. What? You ever have like your number keyboard up and you start typing like the letters? No, you, I have it. You know I, I, I snap my numbers at the top. October 19th. There you go. Okay. That's and, like and basically Red, smack and, dab in the middle. And Red Dead 2 <laughs> is when... <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Battlefield 5 is is October 19th? Yeah, October 26th for Red Dead. Yeah, that's uh Battlefield 5 is I getting think, the old, getting the old Christmas sale, old I Boxing think, Day. I think for the there old might be day. enough difference in players for that. It's they're definitely going to take a hit, I think. Uh, I don't think there's enough difference in players. I think there Wouldn't is. Wouldn't it be like bro and bro? Not to make fun of the audience. But no, but I don't know if the bros really play Red Dead. They're the bros Are you kidding the bros me? would Rockstar? play Rockstar? The ro- bros would play GTA. I'd say I'd say they play Red Dead. I don't too. think I don't think a lot of them know about Red Dead. Red Dead wasn't that big of a game. It was amongst gamers. Yeah, but outside of that, I would say Red Dead Redemption brought them in. But I mean, I don't have the numbers on that. I don't. I don't feel like they did. Well, I'm, GTA is definitely. I'm a, skipping that Fortnite <laughs> season that freaking that freaking <laughs> month too. So put it that way. Yeah. All right, Death Stranding. We got just a small update on this. Um, one of the uh, stars of of the game. Mads Mikkelsen um, was speaking to Total Film, and he said the whole concept of playing the game, as I understand, needs collaboration from different people from different parts of the world. Now, this kind of ties into what we've heard earlier about this game, that there's going to be some sort of social media aspect where people need to actually work together to accomplish certain things in the game. Right. And I guess I guess I, I completely missed this or I forgot about this, but in, in Metal Gear Solid Five, I guess there was something people needed all to do to like denuclearize the game or something like that. What? Yeah, there was like some mission that a bunch of people need, that like you needed to complete, or you needed to like 100 percent the game or something like that, right? Okay. And if enough people did that, it would unlock like something else in the game. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. So I guess Kojima wants to keep he wants to try more of that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's just a small update. We don't need to talk about that. That game. I don't. I don't know. Uh, people, people are gonna kill me for this. <laughs> I, I get a feeling this is gonna not be good. I have a feeling that that Kojima, unkempt by a corporate overlord, as bad as this sounds, is going to go creativity overload, and I think it's not going to end up being a very good game. I think he, I think he's going to go too much because I feel like he's so passionate about it that he, he's going to go freaking ham, 
And I don't think he's going to care about the realities at hand. Because people have been, like, essentially giving him an engine, and they're, like, helping him out because he was, like, in that, you know, problematic situation with 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 uh, Konami, right? Konami, yeah. Like, whatever, whatever that situation was. Um, I feel like... I feel like he's going to go too far. I, I, honestly, I honestly get that from this. See, I'm a little more optimistic. I, I'm excited to see what he does untethered. I would normally say yes, but I feel... I feel as though he doesn't want to, or at least didn't, want to like be realistic. He I, didn't. He didn't want to worry about the sales and that type of thing. Because think about it, right? Like Metal Gear wasn't as big. I remember you and Aaron saying when uh, Phantom Pain came out that Metal Gear was never like the biggest selling game, no, right? Yeah. So with that, Kojima isn't the biggest, you know, creative director slash developer slash whatever you want to call him. And so if he's going to go ham independently, he there's some realities there that he has to make some serious money so that he can reinvest, like pay the bills, yeah. you know, reinvest in hopefully another project. But I'm, I'm sure he's found, you know? he is a massive name though, and I'm sure he's found a bunch of investors, you know. Yeah, for, for being one guy, he's a massive name for sure, yeah. but I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being. We'll see. Crazy. Um, we're gonna get, I guess, another trailer at uh, this E3. Um, that's gonna be like what now? Three years of trailers. Yes. Yeah, see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? <laughs> like, if he's nowhere close, and we're not gonna see any gameplay stuff, because and I haven't played that Detroit game again. But if I, but that Detroit game to me, when I saw the trailers, uh, originally I was like too ambitious, and they'll never finish it. I'm actually seriously shocked that it's out right now. Wow. Oh. So, I feel like Kojima is, like, on the same level of ambition. But now, they have been working on um, Detroit for a long time. Yes. Because when, when the heck did Beyond Two Souls come out? A long time ago. That was, that was a PS3 game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they've definitely been working on that game but for a long they've time. But they've had a couple of projects keep them afloat. Did I'm, they? Well, they had Beyond Two Souls, and they had the money from that. Yeah, but I'm, no, I'm not sure if that sold that very well. Heavy Rain? Even that heavy yeah. rain was I I remember that game was mentioned quite a bit during the at the time yeah so I'm sure that because like they're not like they, let's be serious Detroit did not as but far the, as I know use Sony, the budget of GTA Five for example they're a Sony studio too right so like Sony they're, yeah, Sony they're can keep them, keep them afloat like as long as they're working right yeah so yeah. like it's one of those things whereas like Kojima I don't I could like this is total speculation but <laughs> that's my that's my two cents. All right, next up we have PlayStation is apparently still experimenting with portable gaming. This comes from the new PlayStation boss, John Codera. Um, says that the company is continuing to think about portable gaming. So this was him speaking to Bloomberg. And uh, so, yeah, they said they're not discussing any hardware plans, but that, in my opinion, rather than separating portable gaming from consoles, it's necessary to continue thinking of it as one method to deliver more gaming experiences and exploring what our customers want from portable. We want to think about many options. Now, such, such as copying the Nintendo Switch. That's what I'm wondering. Like, clearly the Switch is working. It's selling a bunch yeah. of units. You know, I see kids with it all the time. Yeah. Running around with their Switches. So it's like, what did Sony do wrong with the Vita? And can they learn from the Switch? Well, the Vita, the Vita was, the Vita, I mean, it's a classic Sony project where they release it and then they kind of shut up about it. And they really should, like what Microsoft did with the Surface, just beat the shit out of it, push it, push it, push it, PR it. You know, mm-hmm. market it mm-hmm. and keep going and going and going. Because even the skept- like the people that are skeptical the first year are going to be like, fuck, I keep hearing about this thing. Maybe I should try it. Mm-hmm. That's how you start you're getting it. You know, you got to take a hit. You got to go get to go ham so on stuff. So the Switch is, is Nintendo's only console, right? Yeah. Um, wait, wait, wait. What? The Switch is not their only console. The DS is. But that's, a, like, that's more of a... But those are big, though, man. That's a big piece of. That's a big no, chunk of change. No, you're right, but I'm just saying their their main console that's going to have all their big AAA Nintendo that's games. That's their home console. That's their is, home console. Is the Switch? Okay, oh, yeah. I think that's a fair. What I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that Sony their main console is the PS4, but if they did the same thing as Switch, they're now competing with themselves. Do you know what I mean? If they had a, if they had a portable gaming system that yeah. was that was powerful, yeah, that plugged into a dock yeah. that could connect to your home TV, mm-hmm. you know, they're kind of competing with themselves. Are they? Yeah, because because the Switch is is like four hundred bucks American, yeah. right? PS4 is four hundred bucks. Okay, 
So if Sony came out with a PS4 for four hundred dollars or a Switch like console for four hundred dollars, do you know what I mean? Unless they just want more options for their consumers, but I feel like they they want like people to have both. I don't know what you mean by they're competing with themselves. Like if they release a PlayStation Five that's portable, because they're probably gonna, because they're probably going to want all their best games to be on the PS4. Oh, see, I'm envisioning this as like this is the next gen. I don't think it could be, be next gen. Sure. So like I'm I'm essentially separating it entirely. I'm just saying, I, I, would Sony give up their main home console? For an only Switch like console. No, I think that I think that one would be the Pro and one would not. So the Switch like console would be not the Pro, not the Pro, and then the Pro would be your big 4K gaming yeah home console. Because because one thing one thing we got to look at here. <coughs> so um because I've been looking at like getting another computer uh, and off and on, and one of the things that we we're looking at is like I just people go crazy with these like screens that are like 1440p and crap and i got like a 1080p 100 dollar monitor like i don't give i don't give a shit really <laughs> like like really i don't give a shit so because i'm only doing 1080p i can get a lot more out of my card so the same like mentality can go for the console if mm-hmm. you have a portable ps5 let's say you know you can put a lesser card in there and put a 720p screen on as long as the game looks okay no one's going to be like man i really want like a 7k fucking display on the go like come on shut up yeah, dock it, and then it'll be fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, I think what's making the the switch work though is that it's it's their only main console. So if you want to play the new Zelda game, mm-hmm. you know you have to buy it on Switch. I know it came out for Wii U, but like for the best experience, you want it on the Switch. What Sony did was our best experiences are on the PS4. Yeah, and we have these secondary experiences. Yeah, lesser than the PS4. You know. Which, which but they're, hurt but, it, really. but they're there, and I think that's what happened. So I think if they came up with a console now, saying like a handheld console now, that's saying you can play The Last of Us Part Two on our brand new PlayStation Portable. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. full 1080 or whatever you want it to be on the on the portable console. Okay. There's nothing held back. It is The Last of Us Part Two completely portable. Okay. That would probably sell the units. No, yeah, like no, I mean, like it, I, I'm saying it has to be something like. If you bought a P, like let's let's just say it is a PS4 portable. Mm-hmm. If it's if you buy a PS4 game, I mean I don't know how the discs would work, but like PS4 games play on that thing. It's not a PS4 PS4 uh, PS4 mobile game. It's a PS4 right. right that just that is mobile. Yeah, that's it. There can't be any line. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe like oh, it doesn't work with PSVR or something niche. If they have to do something, right? Because I don't know how the hell that would work. But although that would be pretty crazy too. Like let's say if like the headset for for PSVR, it just yeah. pops out, and then you have a portable PlayStation. I mean, they could they could potentially do something <laughs> like that. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds pretty nuts. Um, in more PlayStation news, the P- PS4 is entering its final phase of its life cycle. Now, this was a Codera again, but he was talking to analysts and investors. <laughs> About the console ending and entering its final uh, life cycle phase. Now, right. what, what they mean by this is essentially, uh, it, the the profits would be hurt by a decrease in in unit sales, but that recurring revenue from membership services such as PS Plus would help cushion the impact. Yeah, well, it's because people have a PS4 now. So essentially, the market is saturated. Everyone who has a PS4 essentially want like has a PS4 or wants. Sorry, everyone who wants a PS4 has a PS4. You're gonna get a few trickle, you know, people still people buying the new one or something, right? Yeah. yeah. So we'll probably see a price drop actually. Well, I think about it. Yeah. So you haven't even reached that point yet. Yeah. Usually you get that for a couple of years. Yeah. He went on to suggest that um, March t- March 2021 would be the time when the company would, would be looking beyond the PS4. Now, what's interesting about this? He says March 2021 would be when they start to look beyond it. So does that mean that the PS4 is going to last to 2021? And then continue, and then they're going to start their marketing for PS5. Well, that, that was that that was that Crouch statement or something, right? No. I wonder if if um, it's addressing now. This wouldn't be revenue, but it's addressing like maybe in twenty twenty one, we'll see the reveal conference, right? Which starts getting the hype up, which then possibly like starts to because this was an investor thing. Mm-hmm. Which possibly gets the investors excited, <laughs> and so people are like all eyes on Sony right now. PS Five is getting ready, you know what I mean? Yeah. I got a, uh, I got a real bad feeling about, uh, I got a real bad feeling about about the next consoles. Well, we got about, a, about what about this thing. 
we got a query corner question that kind of relates to that, man. Well, I got, but I got a real bad feeling about this this end of life cycle thing too. I get, I get the vibe. I get the vibe that they're not that they're not going to continue the collection. That thing that we've talked about in the past, where you know, like, let's say you get a PS5, it should just play all your PS4 stuff, yeah. and like your game sh- collection, like on PC should generally be unanimous and there's no like no such thing as backwards compatible it's just they're all PlayStation games mm-hmm. and like the number is just so you know that like which level of hardware you have i feel like if they're doing this thing now where it's like they're talking about the end of life like i mean this could happen before too and we don't know right but in fact they're talking about end of life cycle and they're worried about this that and the other thing i feel like they and this is total speculation i get the vibe that they're going to want to drive as much revenue as they can immediately. And then therefore <laughs> bringing over the old games is detrimental to them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just get that vibe. I, I think you're right because the reason like Sony has not done backwards compatibility in the PS4 ever. Mm-hmm. You could, you could argue PlayStation now, but that's kind of a cop out. Well, and you can also, you can also purchase, um, you can purchase games like the, there's like PS ps3 on ps4 and ps2 i think on ps4 like you bought that pod racing game but that that was that wasn't the they yeah they kind of re-released it though but it's like, like those were 1080 they remastered them essentially well remat remastered but not ridiculously like it yeah. wasn't like they redid the whole thing but but the fact that the ps4 pro can play all the ps4 games without an update yeah. shows you that it's possible for them to simply upgrade the hardware yeah. And have previous software work on it. Well, it's just like it's the PS4 Pro essentially is just more resources on board. Yeah. So it's like a game is like screaming for RAM. The PS4 can't deliver it, let's say, but the PS4 Pro has that and it can just give it to it. But what I'm saying is they, they, they've they showed us they can do it. It's not like they can't lie to us and say it's oh, so a technical thing why we have to keep. I mean, although they did say that with. But um, that was that was true, though, because the, the core with the, processors. With the Xbox thing? No, with the core processors in the PS3. Completely different architecture than the PS4. That's true. Although, remember they said when Xbox was doing it, they're like, that's pretty interesting. It's it's like a technical thing. Yeah. Like it's a, uh, I forget who it was now, but one of the one of the execs said that when Microsoft unveiled that, they were like, that's pretty interesting how they got it working because that, that's like mm-hmm. a pretty big technical feat. Yeah. Um, I think you disagree with, with me. I think you and Adrian disagreed with me that, that the only reason why there's backwards compatibility on Xbox is because they're competing with Sony. I don't agree with that. I, I completely agree with that. I think it, I, Xbox... I don't agree with that because I think they're trying to make the PC a gaming platform, and I feel like I feel like they need to start making the game collection unanimous, and people are expecting things everywhere. But that now. doesn't mean you need to go back and and bring back all these 360 games. No, but it, it does. I think that's completely it, no. a competitive process because they need look at they don't does, they don't though. have they don't have that many exclusives. Okay, Microsoft is hurting right now. Well, not hurting. They're selling a lot of consoles, but they're they're doing poorly when you compare them to to their competitor, uh, PlayStation. Right, right. So they're they're and they don't have many exclusives. So there's not much value in buying an Xbox compared to a PS4. Okay, so they're trying I mean, to. If they're, you're into the first party titles, there's a lot of titles on Xbox. Yes, still. but but like, if you're mainly playing uh, third party games, it doesn't matter. Okay, fair enough. You can buy any console. But when people are looking for work to get their best value with the games they want to play, okay, there's not many options on Xbox. So they're trying to add value by saying all those 360 games you own, you can play them on. Your Xbox One, so please choose our console instead of the PlayStation. It's one of those things where I wouldn't be surprised if that is one of the reasons. Yeah, but I feel like the infrastructure investment is too big for them to just add, just for them to add value. Like I feel like they would have known that adding those features, like adding backwards compatibility, was indeed an added bonus, but not a bonus enough to purchase an Xbox One. I feel like well, no, it's, it's, like, it's going to be in conjunction with stuff. They're going to hope that they get their first party developers. No, on board but and, that, but it. Coming from that Sony thing that I just said, where they said it was a technical feat, if it was, if it was that a very <laughs> yeah. large technical feat, if it was that, I don't think that that technical feat would have been worth hurdling, if it was only for adding a little bit of value. But I mean, a technical feat to Sony is is changing usernames. That that's the questionable thing, yeah. though, right? Like we don't know what that what, in what context he means. Yeah. Like, we don't have the details. Literally, the technical details. We don't have them. Yeah. But like, if it was a big technical feat for anybody, including Microsoft. I don't think they would have done it because it sounded like it was almost like a licensing problem too, mm-hmm. where they had to like get people to re-release their games and stuff. Like it just sounds like they a pain in the they ass. They could just flip, flip the switch and say all three hundred and sixty games are now 
available on Xbox One. They got to go to all the developers and work deals out and whatever else. And like, how much are they investing to, for what return? I don't think it's a return enough. I don't and think, I think it they, is either. And I think, I think they knew it wasn't going to be though. But that that that's why they're adding value to try to get you to buy a console. But but if you think about it, I, I what I think they're doing. What I honestly think they're doing is they're trying to make it like a modern console. It's it's getting to the point where you have software and it just works. Like, sure, you know, there might be still be remakes and the other one will be way better. But, you know, it's 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 ludicrous that it's like, oh, I got to, like, you know, go and get this old ass box and mm-hmm. do all this shit. Like, we expect our game saves to be everywhere via cloud. We expect all our photos to be everywhere via cloud if we're yeah. taking it to the phone. Yeah. We expect all our login information and all that type of stuff to be everywhere. Hell, I come here, I log in. Friggin' I'm on Fortnite. I don't need to download anything. I'm just on Fortnite. I got my whole my whole collection. Right. Same on my PC. Like everything is expected to be everywhere. And I feel like Microsoft's trying to deliver that. Well, take Apple as an example here, okay? All of Apple's software, except for their pro stuff, is completely free. Okay. All their apps on the iPhone that they that they make is free. Yeah. Okay. The reason why they're doing that is because they're trying to make it a better value proposition. For you to buy an iPhone, okay, compared to their competitors, yeah. So what they're really trying to push is the those iPhone iPhone unit sales. Okay. So they're they're spending money developing these apps, adding new features to these apps, the free software updates that add new features. It's all free, okay. Yeah. Because they want you to buy that phone. But that's but that is so, a huge value. Like no, but that, what I'm that's saying a huge is, like chunk of change you still have to pump out. Yes, but it's, it's all to get that that unit sale. Yeah. So Microsoft, they're spending money. Yeah. Doing the the hard work of of getting backwards compatibility on their Xbox One. Okay. They're doing the hard work of getting the developers to sign on. Yeah. Because they want you to buy their console. And I, the, and I the honestly reason, argue that it's not. And that. the reason why they want you to buy their console so heavily is because PS4 is outselling them like like two two or two point five to the one or something like that. Well, that like that's fair. Like, yes, I agree that Microsoft is trying to get us to buy their console. Yes. Like, that's that's an. So any a, any value they can add, they're hoping will increase sales. So they're willing to spend the money, whatever it takes, to get unit sales increased. See, I, I, I actually argue that they that it is just due to the cloud thing, and that's why I also argue the same point of back of um, uh, cross platform play. Why why Xbox is open to being with PS4 is only because they're in second place. If the roles were reversed, Microsoft would not be asking for PlayStation to have cross game uh, support. Again, I don't think that that's a big enough value proposition. It's not just... The, you're thinking it's a singular thing. This is a combination of all the features of both boxes. But if PlayStation's selling so well, adding adding cross-gameplay isn't isn't adding much if they're missing such a large part of the market. Sony doesn't need to do it. No, that's what I mean, though. What I'm saying is that the, the value proposition that you're saying, that cross, wait, wait, okay, cross-platform wait, wait. play... I got a point here. I got a point. Okay. So you you were saying how the PS4 is selling like crazy because the friends your your friends already have it. Yeah. So what console are you going to buy? Are you going to be the one left out with the, without a PS4? Yeah. You're going to buy a PS4. Okay. So what does the cross multi uh, cross platform multiplayer do? It allows you to buy an Xbox if you want to buy an Xbox and play with all your PS4 friends. Yeah. Well, hypothetically. That's what they want. Yeah. They want you to have the freedom to buy a, uh, an Xbox One if you want it. If you're big into Halo, but all your friends are, are playing no, but, but on should, their PS4s. Shouldn't they recognize that Halo and Gears of War isn't a good enough value if they're losing this badly? Like, I think like, they, I think they, they understand that. Yes, no, I do. but the thing is, is I, I they said that they were going to invest big into the first party titles. Yeah. But I feel like they would have known to do that earlier than they did do it. I don't think that these extra features are... I mean, these extra features at the end of the day are to get more console sales, mm-hmm. obviously. But I feel as though they would have been added in one way or another to the platform, even if they were winning. I don't think so. As a, as a, as a value because, proposition. Because they're getting that boost in, in, in sales that you were talking about. If the roles were reversed and everyone had an Xbox One, yeah, and you wanted a PS4, but you really wanted to play with your friends, yeah, you're going to cave and buy an Xbox One, yeah. That's more sales to Xbox. But then you got to buy the Xbox Live, and then now you're paying them more money. But Microsoft is Microsoft has done something interesting though, in in the form of the the Scorpio or the Xbox One X, in which, in which that they knew and they even said that it isn't a console for everybody, and. 
if they were really after solely console sales, they would have left it at the S or just the Xbox One. No. It, and they would have tried to sell that. The X does not add value. Yes, the it X, does. The X add value, adds no, value. Does. No, no, no. The X adds value to a high-end or a high-profile customer who probably is going to be purchasing both of them anyway. If you have a high-end gamer, if you will, who has the money to splurge on a very good console where they could just save money and buy a, and a used Xbox One or just buy an Xbox One S, right? Mm-hmm. If they really, if they, if if it's someone's value conscious, they're going to go for one of those. Hell, I would probably go for an S right now if I needed to. But if somebody is going to be spending the extra money on the X, like Microsoft must know that like adding that console to their lineup does not make people want to buy the console. I'm not going to buy an X so I can play Morrowind backwards compatibility. That's going to be able to run on my original Xbox One, no problem. No, of course, it's freaking uh, Morrowind. Of course, the X is a niche product for them and no, so, but is, why, so is the why ps4 would they, pro why if, if if they desperately and only want sales why would they spend any resource on that because they can't be left behind because sony came up with a ps4 pro that does 4k gaming they wanted to have a 4k gaming no, console but they went way went way beyond it though man. because like they, because, went, they went ham like they didn't go just a little bit they went ham they could have just did an s2 or something because, no but the reason why that happened yeah was because the ps4 outperforms the xbox one that's fine. So okay. they, so they said. Fine. So they said, okay, we don't want this to happen again, where we have the weaker console. It's slightly weaker. It's not that much weaker. Okay, but it's, the, it's slightly, nominally weaker. Like it's not serious. Like people freaking but out. At the beginning of the, that console age, they were running into a bunch of issues of not being able to hit 1080. Okay. okay, that was a problem for them. Fair enough. All right. So they didn't want to get stuck in that situation again. So they said, we're going to go overboard on this console. We're going to make sure it outperforms anything Sony's working on. And there's probably the the what do you call it espionage going on. They probably knew what the specs were of the PS4 Pro. Okay. So they said, okay, we can beat this. But they didn't... They and that's didn't, why they beat it. The thing is, though, is they didn't just beat it. They, like, went way out of the out of the ballpark. Yeah. Like, they went ham on that thing. Yeah, they, because because well, if you're looking for a 4K console, what are you going to choose? The the lesser PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X? I don't they're think... Trying to no, add, but you're, they're trying they're, to add they're, a they've value. They've been priced out. They've been priced out. They're trying to add a value to that customer no, who wants 4K gaming. No, but they themselves way out, did they not? Isn't the isn't the X so much more expensive than the Pro? But by the by the time not when the Pro launched, I don't think. What did the Pro launch at? I don't know. I thought it was more. I thought it was significantly more expensive. I don't remember the price. I can't remember the price. I thought it was at least a hundred off. I can't remember the price. You might be right. And so at that point, you're again you're reaching the market in which the guy's going to have both of them anyway. Well, then maybe that was a mistake there. But all I'm saying though, I don't th- think it was this, a mistake. I think it was just they just did it. This is competition. This is what you, this is what the whole free market is supposed to be about. No, but you're about, not giving them credit for doing what the market is forcing them to do. But something like crossplay doesn't make any sense to me. Like they could they could try to snuff Nintendo out if they're really trying to compete and they're losing to, to they're losing to. But I, I don't like, think like, like I don't Nintendo think... Nintendo is at least as far as I know they're still in third. Microsoft's yeah. in second and PlayStation's in first. I don't think Sony I, may, maybe Nintendo is first or maybe Nintendo is is not third, but. I, if if Nintendo and Xbox are essentially teaming up, right? Mm-hmm. Why would they eat? Like, why would they do that? Like, they are essentially with the cross play, but why would they do that? I don't think they consider. I don't think Sony and Microsoft consider Nintendo a threat. But the thing is, though, is because I feel like I feel like Microsoft games, could have just snuffed them out. That's such a big market. Most of the games you can play on Nintendo, you can't play anywhere else. So it's not like. And, and they don't get third party much, third party support. Yeah. So it's like if you want to play Battlefield, and you're not playing it on a so Switch. So why even invest in the cross play again? Because they want to get those those Xbox players who are being forced to buy PS4s because all their friends have PS4s. No, but they're not. But like they're not successfully getting the PS4 crossplay. But they have the they have the successful they, want it. they have the successful crossplay with the with the Switch with like Minecraft for example. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like like they're but doing they're see, doing these mine, extravagant mine, the thing with projects Minecraft, though, for Minecraft, no reason. Minecraft supersedes everything though. It make it makes billions of dollars for them. I mean I mean. Another thing with that, though, again, Microsoft owns Minecraft. That's right. You have to remember that. That's so, right. And that's so since thing. it was already on a bunch of platforms. I mean, maybe it was super easy for them in that case. Yeah. We don't, we don't know what the technical sh- shit is, but. Yeah. All uh, I'm saying is, I uh, yes, maybe a lot of this, like when they're talking in their main offices, right, they're probably thinking of this as how can we help the gamer? What, what's the best thing we can do for the gamer, right? But at the end of the day, they're trying to compete 
and the and 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 their bo- the Microsoft board and and the investors want them to beat Sony. Fine. So every decision at the end of the day has to do something to beat Sony. I think they would have been. I think they would have been smart enough to invest in first party games much earlier. Yeah, that was a mistake of theirs. Yes. No, I don't think it was a mistake. I think that it was. I, no, it wasn't. On, honestly, like honestly, I don't. I think that wasting resource on trying to get backwards compatibility is just that. But that has nothing is, to do it, with their it, first party if, games. If first party games is what is what's going to help them, if that's like, because I don't know what will help them. Nothing. Really. They're done. But like, well, then why would they invest in anything? Because they have to try. If they, if it's not going to work, don't even try. No, like, but explain but there's, that there's, to the investors. Nothing will work. At no, this but point. there's Sorry, no. Sorry, guys. It's not clear cut. It's like it's very difficult to make a comeback. Okay. Okay, but they're going to try and do everything they can to make a comeback. The the PS3 made a comeback at the end of the that last uh, yeah con, um, console generation yeah so I mean I could was, see I could honestly see um, Game Pass I could see Game Pass doing something for them here's here's Game a pa- Pass I would say is is a direct competitive move yes. same same with EA Access yeah I agree with that so here's an interesting thing though if if the PS4 has reached like a peak profitability okay maybe gamers will start looking to another console it's like oh I had my PS4 now you know yeah. I'm having my fun with it. Because that's kind of, I guess that might be what happened with the last generation. The 360, everyone had a 360. Yeah. And then, so they started buying PS3s. And then PS3 yeah. caught up by the end of the life cycle. The thing is, though, is if you, if with the PS, with the, um, with the Xbox, what are you getting? You're not getting many first parties. That's why they're investing more. In, that's why they're investing more in but the I first feel, parties. But again, now. I feel like they would have did that earlier. I feel like they would have. It was a have. mistake. I, I, I honestly think Microsoft's trying to just be more embracing of the cloud. I honestly think that. Well, it's not helping them, so they can embrace. I know, but I think I think it will help them. Microsoft has such a big install base, man. They have Windows 10 PCs everywhere. Yeah, but they have Xboxes virtually everywhere. They're losing to the PlayStation, but if but imagine right if they if if like if the next generation PlayStation Five and the Xbox Two or whatever they're going to call it comes out, and and they have all these value propositions now. And they have this like huge cloud infrastructure. That's huge for people. Yeah. It's so much bigger than what Sony can deliver. And so why do they add all that value proposition? To win, possibly, in the next generation. But something like the Xbox One X or backwards compatibility does not help them, I don't think. The Xbox One X, as far as we know, and we haven't checked the pricing, assuming that the Xbox One X was outpriced, was outpricing the PS4 Pro, by a significant margin, like a hundred or more, that immediately makes it not competitive. It is possible to do both. What do you mean? To be to make a competitive decision. Yeah. That also supports the gamer. Well, everything they do is either is is gonna is, is either for direct profitability or to support the gamer. Like like they're still in the gaming business. My point is, and there's no way to test this ever. Okay. Just my point is that if Microsoft was in the lead as far as as Sony is currently in the lead, okay, they would not be talking about. Um, cross-platform playing they, they, between the PC and themselves, sure. Okay, but they wouldn't care about Sony. They wouldn't want Sony in on that. Why would I don't I don't believe that because the Xbox 360 they're under, competitors. underwent no, they're but, competitors. No, no, but I don't believe that I don't. I I believe that they're they're competing. I'm not I'm not totally in denial of competition. Like I want to make that clear. But I think that a lot of this stuff would have still happened to an extent because the Xbox 360, for example, was way in the lead. They released multiple versions of the 360 in terms of the hardware model. That's they also a standard thing, though. What's that? That was a standard thing to do. Though. Yeah, but I mean, they just could have not and just sat pretty and just had the same shit and had the same no, production line, you, and made you, a bunch wait, of shit. Wait, wait. Do you know why though they make the, the smaller consoles? I don't know. They find new ways to make the production cheaper. Okay. So well, okay, a new, well, a new console enough, out because they save money on the production. Okay. Well, then if if it ends up saving them money, then fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. But they did uh they did the software re- rehaul overhaul. They didn't need to do that. If they're if you're super in the lead, no one's gonna be like, I don't like the blade system on the play, on the Xbox. No, but see, I'm gonna buy a PlayStation. Their updates started coming out when Sony was starting to catch up. They needed a way to ke- stay ahead. I I, I don't. And also, again, again though, they though. brought it towards they brought it towards the I'll PC. Give you this. I'll even give, back I'll, then, I'll give you this. A smart company would innovate their own designs and add new features regardless of competition. Yes, because that's how you that's, actually. That's more of the shit I, I'm getting at. That's how you actually stay ahead. Yeah. But, in this case, they're behind. I would say I would say that if a new console releases today, I would say Sony's in bad shape. If a new Sony console, like released? let's say like let's say a new generation were to release, I think Sony's in bad shape. I don't think so, not at all. 
I think Sony's in bad shape because I think Microsoft has a cloud infrastructure that can kick their ass. Yeah, but there's 40 million players right now who own a PS4 okay. who don't own an Xbox One. But they, they don't... Used, but they used to be on 360. It's that easy to flip. Yes, but, but that was because they made massive mistakes. Okay, well, and then they had to do a restructure. That was a, that was a ridiculous amount over. of mistakes, yes. Okay, well... But now okay. they're all used to their, their PS4. Okay. So chances are, they if, if, if Sony doesn't screw up badly in okay. this next console, yeah. a lot of those players are going to stay on Sony. Yes, but... Will you admit that Sony has a lesser infrastructure than Microsoft? Yeah, but Xbox I don't, I don't, now has I don't backwards know, compatibility. I don't know how they, much clouding is going to save them. Not necessarily clouding in that sense, but like Game Pass. Yeah. That's a huge infrastructure. Yeah. And it's better than now. Everything that, like, like again, I'm not being in denial about the competition, but like, I agree. Now and Game Pass are direct competitors. If you're looking at service per service, mm -hmm. those are direct competitors for sure. Mm -hmm. Game Pass beats it. Done. 100% Game Pass beats it. Streaming is lesser. Done. Because internet infrastructure is shit. Companies don't want to update their infrastructure. Some of them don't. Yeah. Or it's just you're in a rural area or what have you. Fair enough. Right? Internet infrastructure is shit. Yeah. I physically cannot play PlayStation now, but I can download games yeah. on, on um, just, Game Pass. Just, Yeah. Well, the thing is, too, is when we were playing, when I played now, when I got my new internet, it still lagged, though, sometimes. It would mm -hmm. just be like, your connection's bad. And I check the connection speed, and connection speed's fine. I'm like, okay, the hell? Yeah. Because it's it, you're getting those hiccups. Yeah. All right. Well, the last two stories. Rockstar, they said that's... Oh, Jesus. We still got stories. Red Dead Redemption 2 won't be delayed again. Done. That's it. October 26th, done. That's all right. All that's, right. So, wait, 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 wait one second here. They, it will not be delayed again. And it who, will not who confirmed be... that? The, the Take Two CEO Strauss Zelnick. So we're really going to see a Battlefield versus Red Dead Redemption Two fight then. Yeah, that confirms that shit. <laughs> All right, and do you, uh, we kind of jumped into it a bit? I don't know if you want to cover it, but we we're way over time here. Oh, what, well, I mean, we talked about Solo, which is going to happen. Yeah, but uh, the query corner question was: What should a console life cycle be? Yeah. So, well, here's a question. Here's a question. Then, if you want to tie it into a story. If PlayStation were to say, okay, we want to make a, a mobile console, like a real one, like, a, like, I mean, like a real home one, like the Switch kind of thing, would you say that that should be a new generation? If it's their only console, yes. If it's their only console. Yeah. Like, if they say, like, they're, they're obviously still support the PS4 and PS4 Pro, right? But if, like, this new console is, like, the only thing and there's no plans for PS5. Okay. It's only the PlayStation Switch, right? Okay. Then I would say that's a new generation, yeah. That's a new generation. Yeah. Like, do you think do you think that 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 we should have another generation, or do you think that do you think it should just be like a here's a PS five, it plays all the old shit, and should we be See, more should we be more PC like now? As a consumer, I would prefer that because we're used to that on our phones already. What do you mean? I can play I can play an app that came out like ten years ago. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I think that the consoles are the only. Th thing i could think of off the top of my head that cuts cuts things off i mean you can kind of compare it to physical movie media my dvd player can't play oh yeah, yeah you yeah. know although your blu-ray can play dvds your blu-ray player can t play dvds and yeah, your blu-ray player yeah. is, is an upgrade from the dvd like a vhs can't but vhs was a, a literal physical, analog to digital physical like, difference yeah. unfortunately there's a fucking, yeah there's gonna be a change sometimes yeah but like digital to digital, you're still fine. Like I like one thing I could see happening is the disc tray being being thrown away. Although disc sales, I think, are still pretty good. So who knows? I don't know. With GameStop uh, crumbling, the thing the thing is though, with GameStop crumbling, remember how Adriano always said like they need to keep the disc tray because the 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 retailers where they sell the console need to need want to sell the games as well. Remember that? But here's the thing though those those. Those like retail locations, yeah, don't have as much sway as they used to. Because now a lot of people are ordering it off of Walmart.com. They're ordering it off of Amazon.com. But, the, but those are still ordering it off of Best physical, Buy. Those are still com. physical copies. If you are cutting out, no, but I'm talking like the console sales. Yeah, but so having, but they can so, also order games off of there. But, so but, that that's exactly what I was about to say. Is how pissed off is Amazon going to be? Because there's like that whole Prime thing where if you pre-order on if you have a Prime, you get some sort of bonus. <laughs> I think it's a discount mm -hmm. of some sort. Imagine if if imagine how pissed off Amazon's going to be if <laughs> if they mm -hmm. release if they release a new generation and they they're like no discs 
And Amazon goes, you know what? Fuck you. We're not selling it on Amazon. Console? And now it's like, oh, oh, here we go. Consoles are really, really weird when you think about it. To buy a game that is locked to that console. Like the third party game, obviously. Uh, the apps, apps are the same way because it's t- technically like if you have an I th- Android. I think, I think that's weird. This, this whole digital trend is weird that it is locked to your account. You know, I can't take I can't take my iTunes movie and put it onto like whatever the hell you watch movies on Windows. I'm not even sure where you watch movies on Windows. <laughs> Gro- Groove <laughs> movies or whatever the hell you do, or let's just say the PlayStation. I can't take my my iTunes movie purchase yeah. and play it on my PlayStation, but I can take my Blu-ray yeah play it on my PlayStation, my Xbox One, or my Blu-ray player. But you know it, what I mean. But it's the same thing where. Where you couldn't take that Blu-ray and put it into someone's DVD player just because they're both CDs. But again, that's the difference in 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 what the media can actually read. Right, I guess, yeah. But I'm just saying that it's weird that we uh, that our Blu-rays work on multiple manufacturers on multiple different devices, but digital content is locked to an account that can sometimes only be exclusive to one type of console. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, here's what I'm saying. Why can't I buy a game, a digital game off of Amazon, right, and load it up on my PlayStation? That's interesting. Actually, that gives me an interesting idea is maybe they'll sell codes. Um, but that's an interesting, that's an interesting Oh, yeah, they could sell codes, yeah. They could, they, yeah, they could sell digital codes. But that's, that, that's weird because it's like, well, just buy it on your console then. <laughs> you know what I no, mean? No, but then, then they could maintain the Prime deal. Yeah. And then actually, they don't have to ship anything. Yeah. I don't know. It's just a strange like concept to me. Well, it's that whole thing where it's like we don't really own our shit anymore. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, this this company just like shut down, so we can't like connect to the server anymore, so we can't access this program. It's like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> um, I have a game on uh, Origin. It just says it's not an Origin anymore. That's all it says. It has an exclamation mark. It's like, sorry, this is no longer an Origin. It's like, good. Do you think they'll ever pass a law to protect against that kind of stuff? Only, it, it only if it's widespread, because it's it's still kind of like self policing, where yeah. the marketplaces haven't exactly shut down, and marketplaces that have shut down have given away their shit. It's, it's just strange that you buy a certain thing that has expectations of what that is, yeah, and either they remove content or make it unplayable entirely. Well, Do you know we, what I mean? Well, I had I had purchased a bunch of movies from uh from the from BlackBerry World way back in the day, and then like that section of the store shut down. And they just like released a DRM free and was like, make sure you download it. Or like, there was a solution of some in some case. That's the way to handle it. It was like a transition thing. Or but what's weird about that is if you remove the DRM, you could just make copies and send it to all your friends. No, but that's what I mean. Is I can't (laughs) I can't remember whether they gave us a DRM free one or whether there was a transition to a partner service. Right. I can't remember now. But it was there was a way. Like it was like it's a self policing industry because it's like yeah you know this sucks. But like make sure within the next four months you just transition. Yeah, because it would suck if, if iTunes went down. You know, I think I have like 100 movies on iTunes. Do you know what I mean? And they just like pull that DRM server and they're just like, fuck you. It would be unlikely. But if iTunes ever ever went down where they said iTunes is no more and I delete these movies off my hard drive. You're fucked. They're gone. The thing is, though, the thing is, though, the same thing is like if you have a disc and you accidentally break the disc, you're fucked anyway. But like because it's just but that, that's my mistake, though, breaking the disc. Yeah, but you deleting the movies is your mistake, too. No, but my computer is going to crash or die or whatever. Well, then you're supposed to make a backup, though. Like, 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 yeah. there, like there is a, there is a point in which, in which like the but, but my point company is, can't my, be fully responsible for everything. But my point is those things are, are, are in my hands and I'm able to control that. Okay. Yeah. They can't come in and take my DVD away from me, but it was just one day I could wake up and they could say, this movie is no longer yours. You no longer have access to this movie. Our service shut down. You no longer have access to any of your movies. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a strange phenomenon. It's a it's a pretty I'd honestly say it's a pretty capitalist phenomenon. And one thing is that is that you can't pass on your iTunes library when you die. You can't pass it on to anyone else. So all the money I've spent on my iTunes library, yeah, can't go to anyone else. I mean, unless you give them a username and password, you you, you can skirt by it, yes, but they can't they can't ever be the legal possessor of that items of those items are you sure that's true yeah like, this, like, is, like, this has happened you, this happened you, uh i think i think like schwarzenegger or someone like had this issue crop uh, crop up on them so i was gonna say like what if you gave me your username and password i then sh- i just i then change your your email yeah they and, wouldn't know i'm dead and your path and your payment information yeah it's not like as if i stole those movies you gave you gave me the access like you're dead 
and then like I just like they were paid for. But there might be some there might be some weird law where you're not supposed to have access to that account or something. I don't know what it is. Because like to me, it would almost just make more sense if it was like that account has ownership, and then like you own the account. But in my will, I can legally not leave you my iTunes stuff. That's really strange. Yeah, that's really really strange. Yeah, it's capitalist because I don't own it. Yeah, see, sorry, buy it again. (laughs) Anyway, we're way over time, so. Yeah. Let's uh let's call and it. And that career corner was like beat to death when we got to it. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Alright, we'll see you guys next week. We're on the uh the iTunes and the Google Play music. And wherever you listen to podcasts. Evidently, I guess. Or no, not. literally, I, I use a different podcast service and we're on there. Yeah, we're on there, okay. We're we're somewhere. Well grab our RSS feed and plug that into whatever you do with an RSS or feed. Or just use a podcast app. Yeah. Alright, see ya. Peace. <laughs>